In the last section, you learned about the decline of the Qing Dynasty. In this section, you will learn about the fall of the Qing Dynasty in the early 20th century and the changes in Chinese society and culture during this time. The Fall of the Qing After the Boxer Rebellion, the Qing Dynasty tried to make reforms. The civil service examination was replaced by a new educational system based on the Western model. After 1905, legislative assemblies were formed at the provincial or local level. Elections for a national assembly were held in 1910. Reformers soon became angry, however, when they discovered that the new assemblies could not pass laws but could only give advice to the ruler. The reforms also did nothing for the peasants, artisans, and miners. Their living conditions were getting worse because of tax increases. Unrest grew in the countryside. The first signs of revolution appeared during the last decade of the 19th century. A young radical, Sun Yat-sen, formed the Revi Revive Chining China Society. Sun believed that the Qing Dynasty could no longer govern the country, but he knew that the Chinese people were not ready for democracy. He developed a reform prog process that had three stages, a military takeover, a transitional phase in which Sun's own revolutionary party would prepare the people for democratic rule, and the final stage of a constitutional democracy. In 1905, Sun united radical groups across China and formed the Revolutionary Alliance. In 1908, Empress Dowager Su Qi died. The throne now passed to China's last emperor, Henry Pu Yi, who was an infant. In October 1911, followers of Sun Yat-sen started an uprising in central China. The Qing dynasty collapsed, but Sun's party did not have the military or political power to form a new government. The party was forced to turn to General Yuan Shiyang, who controlled the army. He agreed to serve as president of a new Chinese republic. An End of Civil War after the collapse of the Qing Dynasty, the military took over. General Wan Shiyang ruled in a traditional way and even tried to set up a new imperial dynasty. Reformers hated him because he used murder and terror to destroy the new democratic institutions. He was hated by traditionalists for being disloyal to the Qing Dynasty. He came into conflict with Sun's party, now called the Guomingdang or Nationalist Party. When Yang dissolved the new parliament, the Nationalists started a re rebellion. The rebellion failed, and Sun Yat-sen fled to Japan. General Yan died in 1916 and was succeeded by one of his officers. For the next several years, China slipped into civil war. Warlords seized power in the provinces. Their soldiers caused massive destruction throughout China.
Chinese Society in Transition The coming of Westerners to China affected the Chinese economy in three waves. Westerners introduced modern means of transportation and communication. They also created an export market and integrated the Chinese economy into the world economy. The growth of industry and trade was especially noticeable in the cities. A national market for commodities, or marketable products, such as oil, copper, salt, tea, and porcelain, had developed. New crops brought in from other countries increased food production. To some, these changes were beneficial. Western influences forced the Chinese to adopt new ways of thinking and acting. But China paid a heavy price for the new ways. Its local industry was largely destroyed. Many of the profits in the new economy went to foreign countries. After World War I, Chinese business, businessmen began to develop new ventures. Shanghai, Wuhan, Tianjin, and Guangzhou became major industrial and commercial centers with a growing middle class and an industrial working class. China's Changing Culture In the 1800s, daily life for most Chinese people was the same as it had been for centuries. Most were farmers, living in villages in rice fields and on hillsides. 125 years later, there was a different society in China. The changes were most obvious in the cities. The educated and wealthy in the cities had been affected by the presence of Westerners in the country. Confucian social ideas were declining. Radical reformers wanted to eliminate traditional culture. They wanted to create a new China that would be respected by the modern world. The first changes in traditional culture came in the late 19th century. Intellectuals began to introduce Western books, paintings, music, and ideas to China. Western literature and art became popular in China, especially among the urban middle class. Most creative artists followed foreign trends, although traditionalists held on to Chinese culture. Literature, in particular, was influenced by foreign ideas. Most Chinese novels written after World War I dealt with Chinese subjects, but they reflected the Western tendency towards realism. Most of China's modern authors also showed a clear contempt for the past. Ba Jin was one of China's foremost writers at the turn of the century. In his trilogy, Family, Spring, and Autumn, he describes the disintegration of traditional Confucian ways as the younger members of a large family attempt to break away from their elders. <laughs> 